Hi, I'm Shauna Steele, Auntie's Beads Designer, and on this Carla Cam, I'm going to be showing you how to make wire wrapped rings. The materials and supplies you'll be needing for this project are as follows. You'll need a 20 millimeter coin bead. You'll need a Swarovski graphic bead in a 12 or 18 millimeter. I'm using an 18 millimeter. And you will need a Swarovski button bead. I'm using jet, but it also comes in a couple other colors. You'll also need wire. For when I use silver, I like to use artistic wire because it is non-tarnish. And I'm going to be using a 20 gauge. If you have a little more experience working with wire, you'll probably want to use an 18 gauge. And you will want some color craft wire. It comes in colors. I'm using copper, but it also comes in gold. It comes in a variety of different colors so that you can sort of accentuate your beads with a splash of color. The tools you'll be needing for this project are a ring mandrel. I'm using our black plastic ring mandrel. You will also need a pair of nipper tools to cut your wire. And then you will need a pair of chain nose pliers or a designer crimper tool. This is to round out the edges and flatten your wire once you've finished your ring. The first thing we're going to do is a simple wire wrapped ring where you're using the coin bead and you're going to need about two and a half feet of wire. In this case I'm using the 20 gauge color craft wire in a gold and you're going to want to string the bead onto the wire and get it at about a halfway point before you pinch the sides down so that they're running, the wires are running parallel to each other on either side of the bead. After you've pinched your wires down on the side, you're just going to want to take your wire and slip it down on your ring mandrel. If you're going to make your ring, you want the finished piece to be a size 7, you're going to start wrapping at a size 8. So just bring your wires down to that mark and just wrap your wire around, making sure that they're going underneath the bead and that they hold at a size 8 until you've wrapped them about three times on each side. After you've wrapped your wire around the mandrel a few times, you're going to want to bring the top wire down and your bottom wire up. After you've removed your ring from the mandrel, you're going to want to wrap your wire around the band. Pull it snugly, and you're going to want to do this, I would say, three to four times. And then you're going to want to turn your ring over and do the same thing on the other side. After you've wrapped a few times, you're just going to want to take your nipper tool and clip your wire. And then like I said earlier, you can use chain nose pliers or you can use your crimper tool. I usually use my crimper to just crimp the wire so that it flattens it out and keeps it from poking you or snagging your clothing. The ring using the graphic bead, I started off the same way as the ring using the coin bead where I centered the bead on the wire and then pinched the sides. On this one, I wrapped it around the mandrel just a couple of times, two times instead of three, and I brought my wires to a position where one wire is coming across the top of the graphic bead and the other wire is coming up the side of the bead. I want my wires to be in this position before I pull them off the mandrel to wrap them. After you've removed your ring from the mandrel, you're going to put your thumb on this piece of wire that you ran across the top of the graphic bead. You're going to hook the wire down and then wrap it just as you did the coin bead, about three to four times around that band you created. At this point, your wire will be running across your bead. You might need to reposition it just slightly to make sure that it's tight before you start wrapping 
the other side. And again, three to four times, you want to wrap that wire around. And then, same as your other ring, you want to take your nipper and cut your extra wire and then take either your chain nose pliers or your crimper tool and just press that wire in. Okay. And remember earlier I told you that if you wanted to make your ring a size 7 that you were going to start at an 8. So I'm just going to show you what that finished ring looks like on your mandrel. It came out to be a size 7. The final ring I'm going to show you is the one using the Swarovski button bead. And this one starts off differently than the other two. We're actually going to wrap the band first and then add the bead. So again, I'm going to start my wrapping at a size 8. And I'm going to wrap it around three times. And I'm going to bring the wires together and slightly pinch them at the center. Okay, after you've pinched your wires in the center, you're just going to want to drop your bead so that one piece of wire goes through one hole and the other piece goes through the other hole. Okay. After you've brought your bead down onto the wires, you're going to want to bend one wire that way and the other wire in the opposite direction. You're going to want to bring one of your wires so it comes up and the other one so it comes down. This is the point where you're, you're going to start wrapping the wire around the band. Okay. After you've gotten your wires in their desired location, you're going to pull the ring off the mandrel, and this is the point where you're going to wrap the wire around the band. So you've taken this wire down, and you're going to pull it firmly up, and then take it around, and you want to wrap each piece as close to the last one as you can so that they're tight, snug next to each other. And again, you only need to do this three or four times before you move on to the other side. And I find it is very helpful to keep your thumb on top of the bead just to keep everything in place. Okay, when you have your wires where you want, again, you're just going to nip and tuck. Hi, I'm Carla Schaefer, NT Speeds Designer, and I'd like to invite you to check out the Learning Center on our website for design ideas and jewelry making projects and other Carla Cam videos.